Well, well, well. I come all this way over to tell the Martins to get their patriotic tales over to the polling places, and what do I find? I find a kid who's supposed to be in New York City. I'm fine, Mama. Thanks. How are you? What are you doing here, Ted? Time off for good behavior. Yeah? What about your sister? Did she come with you? You mean Jenny? The only good thing to come out of our family? She's fine. She wanted me to tell you that she... She loves you. Oh! Well, she has a very strange way of showing it. I've only gotten three postcards the whole time she's been away. One of the Rockettes and two of Coney Island. Mama, what, what, what do you want her to do? She phones you every other night. Well, I wonder if she would be where she is today if I had mothered her every other night. She wouldn't be a rich and famous model raking in the money. Not that you ever gave a damn about me, Mama. But for your information, neither one of us is raking in the money. Yeah, well, I did my civic duty. I hiked on down to the school and cast my ballot. It was fun. Well, I'm glad your life is so exciting, Amanda. No, really, it was a lot of fun. First, they check your name off in this big book, and then you go into a booth with a drawstring curtain, and there's this metal panel there with all these switches, and you pull the one for the candidate of your choice. Makes you feel like an American. I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, right, so I'm patriotic. Oh. Well, speaking of patriotic, there's a great old war movie playing down at the mall. You want to go with me tonight? Amanda, I don't know why I'm talking to you, much less ever go to a movie with you. Huh? I should have stopped talking to you way back in kindergarten, the first time you stabbed me in the back. Yes, uh, I deposited a check for $100,000 this morning, and I would like to know when it will clear my account. Is that a local check, Professor Wallingford? It was drawn on a New York bank. That would be five business days, sir. What? Do you mean I can't get my hands on that check for five whole days? I'm sorry, sir, it's bank policy. But, 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 but this check was issued by Palmer Cortland. Surely you realize that he's one of the wealthiest men in this country. Can't you make an exception? I'm sorry, sir. Five working days. Rat! No wonder this country is in such turmoil. You can't even depend on the banks. Mandy! Go, Benjamin. We're going out. Where to now, love? We're going to pay a call. A long overdue call on Palmer Cortland. It really is a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Cuddy. Oh, well, thank you. Please call me Brooke, all right? Actually, I recognized you as soon as you walked in. Excuse me, I have to say hello to some people. Oh, sure, go ahead. Right. Okay. I recognize you because I've seen you on television. Oh, television, right. Well, it's nice to know someone out there is watching. <laughs> So, uh, how do you like working at the Gold Coast? I think oh, I think it's great. Oh, oh, oh I'm, so, I'm sorry. Please, please sit. Oh, it's okay. Uh, this so, up. I, oh, well, thanks. I don't know what made me do that. I'm no. usually not clumsy like this. Oh, this. don't worry about it. It's my fault. I, I had it sitting on the bar here. What happened? So, no, no, no. Just a little uh, minor accidents. All right. Thank I'm, you. I'm real sorry about that. I guess it's first day jitters and all. Sure, sure. Well, it was nice meeting you. Hope to see you. Nice again. meeting you, Harold. I gotta go home and unpack. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Don't work too hard, okay? No, listen, why don't you bring your harmonica when you come home? We can take a little break by the river, huh? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you. was a brilliant idea, but getting Langley to act as our middleman positively inspired. Well, you know, I still think you would have done much better with a different piece of land. I didn't want a different piece of land. I wanted that piece of land right next to corporate headquarters. Should have bought it years ago. Well, you remember I sent him a memo around of all. It was around uh, January, I think. Yeah, you don't have to remind me of that. I fully appreciate your talent. <laughs> Steve, I... Oh, hello, oh, Father. You're looking good. Oh, thank you. Are you ready? Am I ready? Am I ready for what? We're going to bring Brooke her housewarming present. And, and lunch from the serving spoon. I mean, I can't, I can't. Your father and I have much too much work to take care of. I just, I can't do it right now. Well, 
Father, surely you can spare Steve for just an hour? Nina, we're, we're in a real time crunch with that whole Suzuki project. I mean, I just don't have the time. Well, right Steve, now. you promised. You promised you'd go even help me pick up the I said the answer is no. Father, won't you tell Steve that he's allowed to take an hour's lunch? Make you happy. He can have the whole afternoon. Go visit Palmer? Oh, no, dear. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> I see no reason why I should deny myself the exquisite pleasure of watching his expression while I tell him I've done him in. Oh, but, but, but you don't understand, you see. In a situation like this, you've got to be patient. Now, if you hold off a few more days, you can triple the sweetness of your revenge. Ah. Huh. Well, like, uh, like catching a fish. You play out the line and let him think that he's gotten free, and then just at the last moment, you yank him in and have him flip up on the deck. Oh, <laughs> I think that's disgusting. Well, you, you want him to suffer, don't you? I want him to writhe in agony. Ah, well, then, do it my way, dear. Give him time to sign his contracts, hire his construction workers, invest millions in a project which will never even get off the ground. But he's already to sign the contracts right now. Uh, well, that's what lawyers are for. Now, we'll draw up our uh, pre-closing statement, which I will deliver to his lawyers, and then, when the moment of the closing occurs, you come in and lower the boot in front of Palmer and his cohort. Why, he will, he will expire from mortification. But I want to tell him now. You just be patient, love. Uh, I tell you, why don't you go down to the school and find out how the voting administration is going on? You know, I will never understand why they didn't let you man that table. Well, how long will I have to wait before I tell Palmer? Oh, uh, oh not very long, I should think. Uh, five days at the most. Okay, Liza. So why aren't you speaking to me? Same reason as usual. Your big mouth. What did I say this time? How about me and Tad? And how I chased him all the way to New York? I didn't say anything about that. Alfred was here all day long, giving me a hard time about it. Yeah, well, I, di I didn't have any idea. Well, Alfred heard about it from Greg, and you told Greg that I was chasing Tad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I might have said something. Mm-hmm. How could you? How could you go and gossip about me to Greg? Look, Liza, if you are so ashamed of Tad, then maybe you shouldn't be seeing him. Well, you don't know anything about it. Tad and I have a very unusual friendship. Oh, I know all about Tad's unusual friendships. You want to get close to him, and he wants to have sex. You know, I wouldn't go to a movie with you if you paid me. Oh, you got a better offer? Oh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Tad came all the way back from New York here in Pine Valley to see me. Oh, well, he must figure you for a sure thing. Where are you going to go? The back seat of Dr. Martin's car? Or is he going to go all out for you and get a motel room? Well, maybe that's how he treated you. But he happens to respect me. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I had a long talk with Tad in New York. And he understands that I am looking for a more deeper, meaningful relationship. What do you mean you're not making any dough? I thought you kids made a gene ad or something, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, we did. Well, all he got out of that gene ad was the genes. They didn't pay you nothing? Oh, Mama, wake up and smell the coffee. Of course they paid us. The only problem is we have to sign the checks over to Olga. Olga. She takes the things, puts half of them in the bank, and then keeps the other half for for room and board. And don't forget those ridiculously expensive clothes she makes us buy either. Doesn't she give you guys any allowance? When she feels like it. Let me see your bank book. When pigs fly. Besides, I can't. She locks it in a vault. Well, she at least introducing your sister to some eligible guys? <laughs> Keep dreaming, Mama. Keep dreaming. Bad chance. She doesn't let us go out on dates. I'm not talking about dates, Ted. I'm talking about connections. All those fat men that run the garment district. Is your sister meeting any of those? Never miss a trick. No, nope, forget it. She's too weak to move. All we get in that household is yogurt for breakfast, a salad for lunch, and if we're real good, a lamb chop and parsley for dinner. Well, what is the matter with that woman? I have often wondered, Mama. I have often wondered. She thinks she can starve my kids and steal their paychecks. She has another thing coming. Oh. 